Hey guys, welcome to Run Buck on Games. I'm Run Buck. Got another war recap for you. This time we're taking on one of our fellow members of the Elite War Alliance, EWA, above and beyond QQ. Um, just a random match we happened to pick up. Uh, and as you can see here, we did end up winning 88 to 82. Uh, that said, uh, you know, it was a slight advantage to us. So, you know, others might call it more than slight. Uh, in short, they had the same amount of Town Hall 11s as we did. Uh, this is their Town Hall 11s, but three of them. And then uh, no, neither of us had 10 fives. We had four Town Hall 10s. They had two. And then we both had a 9.5. So that plus two on the Town Hall 10 side gave us a four nuke uh, advantage hitting down into Town Hall 9. Um, and then in addition, you know, then they had the, you know, hitting up. That's hard for them. So it probably, when you look at the net, losing by six, they did. If you looked at their... Uh, if you looked at their overall one, they didn't have one attack. I think Galen was just like, I'm done. So maybe he just was like uh, over with that. But uh, if Galen had attacked and gotten a nuke in for one, that would have closed it to five. And then you factor in like, you know, the, the plus two on the Town Hall 10s. They did have two open Town Hall 9s. So it might have made it, you know, within a star or so. Uh, so it was pretty close war on both sides. And actually, they outperformed us at Town Hall 9. If you look at their um, their Town Hall 9 group, uh, you can kind of see maybe at a glance that uh, their their hit three-star rate was around 42% uh, versus ours, which was more 38%, I think was the calculation I did. So a little bit better performance on their side, but where they lost the war really was uh, you know, to the, somewhat to the Town Hall 10 advantage was part of it, but also, really, you're not going to win when uh, when you look at their, uh, they had two misses from their Town Hall 11s uh, on Town Hall 10s, missing being one stars when we had gotten two stars at minimum on both, and one three star. Um, and then in addition, uh, their nuking, they had some missed nukes hitting down, um, where if you look at which one didn't go well for them, Nordar, like so attacking Nordar. No, was that it? Yeah, like here, this was a nuke. So this town all 10 into a nine was a miss. Anyway, that kind of stuff kind of adds up overall. So I think that's what they'll be working on, and we'll work on our town all nine play. But uh, really good war from our town all 10 and 11 group this this time around, and, and that's where we'll feature this time, I guess. At least one. Looking at the vote tallies, our, our leading candidate is, of course, the guy that pulls off the uh, winning... Winning Town Hall 11 three-star, I say winning, it was early on in the war, too, so it was kind of like a, kind of a morale killer for them. Let me pull up my pen here, get it on two times speed. But it's just a classic, you know, healer, Hebo flanking, and then the mass healer, or mass bowlers up the middle, um, where he ended up taking, when he finally gets to here and takes up residence, you know, really, he's got such range at that point, as long as he can get through and get that, uh, and I guess that's probably the best thing he did right there is that free spell. I, I find that with the healer, when you go for that mass healer to the middle, and you want to survive, you've got to have a plan for um, keeping those bowlers up until you can get a lot of the DPS cleared out. Uh, so that free spell is probably actually pretty critical because I found that the infernos are the most damaging to the mass bowlers because it kills your healers behind them. And they're not that strong of troops to begin with. So if those infernos lock to the infernos, or those infernos lock to the bowlers, it's kind of good night, Irene. But Nord's use of the freeze there really kind of helped out. Let me let me speed it up a little bit because I want to go back and look at one thing with the layout of the base to see uh, if something I think that enabled this to happen is there. Uh, let's take a look. Around he goes. Come on, Nord, hurry up, hurry up. There we go. So there's his mix. If you want to take a look at it. But a good attack either way. Um, everybody was excited. He got all kinds of hoorays in chat. But what I'm looking for here is like once he's in the mid, you know, what what you'll see on some bases is where the area that you've gotten access to with the bowlers. So in his case, I think he did a jump, jump. Or was it a jump, jump, jump? I don't know. He had two jumps. So probably was two jumps. But wherever you get access to, do, can you reach with the bowlers everything that could be shooting you. And you'll notice that in this situation, everything but like this guy and, but you know, otherwise he's got basically throw points that kind of reach. But when you've got stuff that's set back but can still reach the mid, like if expos were out and not reachable, 
it becomes a problem for that mid push. So when you're looking at doing the mid drive and kind of trying to live in the middle here, one, you got to take out the backside inferno. And the other is, you know, checking that your throw distance for your bowlers can get to the outer defensive buildings that would be pinging them uh, as they sat there. I don't know. Something I think about. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Nord can comment on whether he ever thinks about that at all. He'll probably say no. <laughs> Second, second recap we want to take a look at, uh, or replay we want to take a look at, is Double G. Actually, he had one extra more vote than one more vote than Nord did. So they, people really liked his attack. It was on seven, and uh, Double G had a six star war. Let's take a look at what he pulled off here. And I haven't looked at these replays actually. I'm kind of moving a little quicker today, but we'll move it to two times speed. Looks like. Oh, it's going to be the he healer giant, Heji, the Heji. Uh, and then the bowlers from the CC, I'm sure, is what's going to be coming next. There they are. So he does a nice job. You know, the big thing with the Heji is that you can get the flanks established so that your bowlers will dive with your team. And he does that. And the other thing that he does nicely is that he keeps his, uh, the aid, notice how the archer tower, or the air defense towers, were isolated from where the healers were so that the healers didn't die. Uh, so that keeps his um, giants under heal, and he can then basically be absorbing, distracting damage so that like this hog team that ended up, I think, went like this, never really had full focus on it in terms of uh, getting all the damage that could be hammering away at it. So think about that as you, I think other people like to call it Hebo, healer bowlers, but... You know, it's really a healer. It's healers on giants with bowlers backing, but you know, whatever. Um, let's take a look. One quick though, quick check at as you look at this base and why it happened. Again, so he came in this way, if you recall, right? So he's going to be end up coming this way. Notice how he gets very early access to this AD, and then and the whole goal I found of with this style of play, where you're, you know, you have healers backing giants, is that you need to protect the healers. You need to get the the thing that can take the heal the your uh, healers down. Got to go down quick. So there you want that one's down. Then he moves on and gets this guy. And see at this point, look at how how much of the base he can basically hang out in before he even gets at risk. And then he does a hog play into that backside AD right now. Also flanking. So I don't know if that was really about the AD, but I I really focus on the pathing of the healers for that attack. You guys can do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, Frog is the last attacker for our highlights. He hit, hit number nine right here. He had three votes for him, for his attack. Let's see. Now, this is a kind of walkie base, and I will give a uh, high five out to Above and Beyond. They had some really nice uh, Town Hall 9 bases. But Frog's just going to go with what looks to be a two-go Wii uh, Suicide Royals into the mid to try to get um, certain ADs down. So he's going to go for this, this, the queen, and then this position here, right? So he's getting some pretty good value. The only AD that's left is this one and this one. So two ADs remain. His queen is still up. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is up there. And then he just does a nice, the flow of the, of the uh, loons there kind of recognizing that he could get that kind of pattern out of it, really kind of took advantage of how spread the base was in terms of where its defensive positions were. So good value. And you might might want to check. Uh, I'd be curious. When this The thing we'll look at at the end of this one when we flip back to the map is where were the air sweepers, right? You know, because a lot of times the this style of attack kind of, kind of uh, slows down. Sorry, my phone is ringing. Here we go. We'll turn that down. Oh, it's all kind of noise today. So now Jay's going to play trump, trump, trombone for you. But yeah, so if you look at the air sweepers, where are they? One's there, so it's going to drop early. And where's the other one? Hello, air sweeper. Where are you? I can't even see it. Does he have a second air sweeper? Oh, yeah, there it is. So it's pointed the wrong way, right? So it really doesn't impact his his play for down here with his what has the Tesla farm. And somebody in the comments and YouTube had asked for how many defenses these bases had. I'll go back 
at the end of this at the at the tail end here and we can take a look at at uh, the defenses by these bases see if they're fresh hits or not the last one we'll do the 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 bonus round will be Heine at uh, on number 20 let's see here let's see what he did the big H I don't know why I wrote Heine <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. Four times speed because it is the uh, bonus round. Uh, and it's just another healer giant push. So let's look at it on the fly as he goes. See how he's getting the ADs and his pathing is keeping the AD. Oh, he's going to get a little flanking action, but he's a little pressure. So all of his healers get dropped. But close. So see how that actually... So to me, I feel like that's... A critical, let's see how close it is in terms of time and number of units left. Oh, he's got a lot of stuff left. So it really worked out for him. It was okay for him that, you know, he basically was able to penetrate to here before he uh, got the base taken out from him. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the uh, the healers aren't that critical, or at least in that base layout. Let's take a look at the base layout. My favorite thing. So what did he gain when he looked, when he when he drove that and we know the style he's going for. He's going for so when he drove that, he's going to have locked up the both expos are going to be down. The queen's going to be out. Uh, he just has a nice. I mean, it has a nice run to it. Maybe that was the difference. Hmm. He did avoid till late stage of the town hall, so it really didn't tie up his troops as they were moving forward. Hmm. I don't know. To ponder, to ponder. All right. So as promised, let's look at the let's look at the defense numbers. Whoops, that was crazy. Let's look at the let's look at the defenses from the team and see how many times we had hit those. So number nine had defended one time. So that was a fresh hit by Frog. So bonus points for him. And then uh, Nord was a, a fresh hit, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Nord's a fresh hit. His three-star in that town 11 was a fresh hit. And Double G on seven, also a fresh hit. So all three of the highlights were fresh hits. Um, H is at on 20 was his second hit. So he had seen a little bit of it. So there you go. Hope it helps you guys. But a great war from above and beyond. Enjoyed playing with them. Always good to play with guys from EWA. Maybe we'll get an actual arranged war where it's totally even. We can figure out who really won this thing, right? Talk to you guys later. What am I going to do? My clan sucks. Hey, it's JTJ. Uh, I think that's an all-out attack. No, no. It's the legendary JTJU. 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 This army. Download Clash of Clans for free. Then subscribe to JTJU and win.